Aww. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I remember these old avids. Look at that, the side of that and the weight oh, of that. I remember lifting, lifting those as well. I remember lifting those. And you'd be terrified. Because if you dropped it, you know that it was going to be a lot of trouble, a lot of pain. A tiny little, tiny little monitor. It's a yeah, shame. All the manuals. I don't know. I, um, and oh, one, wow, look at this. No mouse. This drive. Is that a... Probably only got about... What, you think about a gig? It's, yeah, one or two or something. Because <laughs> that was the thing. We had no, no memory, did we, for footage? Yeah, do you remember daisy chaining all the drives together and then you'd still oh, not, not have enough? Yeah, it'd probably stay on the back, actually. Oh, my God, it's heavy. Yeah, that's right. So you could daisy chain seven of them. You could daisy chain seven of them together. That's it, and because one of the SCSI numbers had to be the SCSI, which is the mm. port on the back, which you, you could only have nine slots all together, but one was taken up by the hard drive. Oh, right. Because I remember having like a tower of seven, and that was supposed to be, well, where I was at the time anyway, the limit. And then you had, you could have... Um, so that would be seven gigabytes of storage. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we used to work in that an extraordinarily low resolution. Well, for me, um, so I'd been at university and I'd worked, well, now the University of the Arts, at London College of Printing. And um, so there I'd cut on film and I'd cut on VHS, like I said. Yeah. And so, um, and then I was freelance, I worked at this corporate company in uh, producing, directing and editing our own films. And then um, I was freelancing as an editor. Mm. It was funny because I didn't leave to actually go be an editor, but for some reason people were asking me to edit, so I did. And um, one of the places where I freelance, I was doing document documentaries like half hours at the time, I think, mm. um, and, and a lot of youth TV. Um, and we, one of the places, Spitfire TV, um, they were beta testing one of the first Avids. Mm, and so. Um, Do you know what year that was? Uh, I think it was uh, 90, might have been 91. Before our time, we got it in '92, I think. Yeah, I have to have a think about it. But I think it was about '91, and um, they asked me if um, I don't know. That seems quite late, actually. You know what? I think it's later, because I think thinking back on it, I think we got the average around '93, '94. Yeah, but I was. It was literally one of the first ones in the country. I think mm. there was one there and one at the BBC, maybe. I think Molly's so got you one. Had version one. Yeah. How was it? It was. Um, well, it was funny because. Stefan, who owned the company, he took me to see it and said, oh, you know, have a look at this and see what you think. And I, I instantly fell in love with it. <laughs> yeah, because I could see, I was just playing around with it and I could see, because I'd worked on film, that um, I'd be able to work non-linear non again. Yeah. And, um, um, and then, I suppose, I don't know, being able to organise everything really easily as well. I don't know, it was really, I was down there for like an hour playing with it and I just... I thought, oh, this is it. This is just amazing. I was so happy. We, I mean, we saw it, but for me, as a I'd come from the linear background, so I'd only ever done one shot, followed by the next shot, followed yeah. by the next shot. Yeah. And now, for us, the big revelation was, wow, we can insert. That's an incredible thing. You can insert and ripple all the rest of the footage down. Yes. I mean, the idea of organising bins or anything like that, that was just, you know, didn't even occur to us. Just the fact that you could go, OK, if we yeah. want to insert something, we don't have to lay off everything afterwards, yeah. drop the new shot in and then lay back everything and then go down two generations. We don't have to do anything. Yeah, yeah, we never so actually like didn't have to yeah. worry about all of that. So that was a revelation. Um, and obviously it was, like, it was really slow. <laughs> the machine was slow. Um, but was it faster than doing, because even with a slow machine, was it still faster than working like a VHS to VHS? Yeah, no, it was, it was faster working. It, I, mean, I mean, it was slow compared to working mm -hmm. on an Avid now. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was certainly quick in terms of really making edits, making edit decisions and making changes and all of that. We were just liberated. I was thinking completely. before when we were outside, I was thinking, I don't remember the early Avids crashing that much. And it's probably just me sort yeah. of like sort of looking through rose tinted glasses. I mean, now they seem to crash more than they did then. Yeah, no, my memory is that they crashed more then. Because <laughs> <laughs> exactly. it's very, you know, it was very intense. Like we were literally cutting films and, um, and teaching it and mm. demoing it and... Especially because you were working for Avid for a bit, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, so I, I was so at Spitfire for you, actually edit, using it, the system, and then oh. I went to work for Avid. And I think um, I think sound was one of the areas that it really freed you up as well, wasn't it? Because you you could suddenly do you know track lay, uh, I think four tracks initially, and then I think it went to oh, eight. As many as four. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, to be able to just put the music down yeah. and and also 
I mean, uh, you have to correct me on this because this is, I was still doing linear at this point and sort of gradually making the move to Avid. But was the, uh, was the sound broadcast quality at that point? Um, Maybe it wasn't initially. I'm trying to remember whether we... I think we did do a sound up still. Yeah, I don't think it but was. But you could speak... Because the difference is, is that when you were doing... Yeah, it wasn't, it, it wasn't. It I wasn't. I don't think it was, no. So they'd still have to conform the sound afterwards. Yeah. Actually, I think... I seem to remember that as well. Yeah. That you'd, yeah, yeah, I remember I had an edit assistant. Who yeah, that's right, because your track lays were... I, exactly. I had to learn yeah. to track lay, because I didn't know how... I mean, to, you know, it was like a whole... I remember mm. track laying, and I, re, I really overdid it. Like I, said, I just... Because I didn't know how, how to do it. So I sort mm. of separated all the sound um, <laughs> onto... When we had, like, tons of... You know, we ended up with, what... Oh, we went to uh, eight, and then I think we got 12 tracks, didn't we? Mm. I remember just doing this particular track lay, and I think... Um, I just separated every tiny little bit of sound and oh, just yeah. done a lot more than I needed to. But then you could, yeah, that, that would be exported off to the Pro Tools. Yeah. Or whatever but, it was in back yeah. in those days. But I mean, that, I remember that was a bit, um, yeah, so you just, there were new things that you had to learn, you know, that people you were providing, because after it would, you were on the Avid, then um, you'd take the time codes and have uh, uh, the online uh, assemble it. But it was just being able to get, those lists of cuts rather than having to write it down yeah, and all of EDL. that you'd export your edit decision list uh, yeah your EDL and yeah. then um, and the same equivalent with the sound. Well, should we go and have a look at the next one because I want to do you remember I remember doing my first proper edit on Avid we were doing something for MTV mm. and the director had come in and she'd shot this it was a story piece uh, as a fashion piece for um, a fashion show on MTV yeah. And it was a story piece about a girl who kept changing her outfit. She was going to meet her boyfriend and then she'd go back and change her outfit again and it was all cut to music. And I just went, this is crazy to do this in linear suite because yeah. we're going to want to expand and contract it to the track. So I said, we should go and do this in Avid, yeah. even though I could barely use Avid. Yeah. And so I went down to do it and I had no idea what I was doing. We still did, but it, it drove her nuts because she was convinced it took her twice as long. Oh, really? But also because I couldn't work out. I mean, I virtually never used computers before. Um, and so I'd get to a bin and I had no idea how to get the time code information up. And she had logs where everything were. Oh no. And so I couldn't even go, I didn't realise that you click the hamburger as they called it and you could change all your columns. Um, hang on, where are we? He says, trying to change the columns and failing miserably because it's uh, an Avid Express. There you go. Well, I've got those, but it's more, I want to change my... Yeah, hold that down. Custom sift. Yeah. No, let me see. Let's have a look. It would be called oh, columns. Uh, no, not that. Not that. No, headings. Oh, yeah. There you go. There it's called go. columns now, isn't it? So, and yeah, I couldn't do any of this. And so she had great logs of where everything is. And she's like, there must be a way of doing this. I'm like, nope, there isn't there. It's very new. Bluffing my way through it. It worked though. So, and then we exported it, um, took it up. Went to the online, but again, it was a slow process because you had to yeah. offline it. We had to ingest all the footage. Yeah, we digitise it yourself yeah, generally, didn't exactly. you? Yeah, exactly. Loaded your footage in and, um, and then, yeah, organised your footage and then kind of went for it. But what was brilliant was being able to do the changes so quickly. Yeah. And, um, oh, look at the, look at the resolution. And that, being able to scroll through like that. What resolution are we at on this one? Hold on. I've lost it again, headings. It was funny because I went from um, editing, you know, documentaries where everything had been filmed before you got there, mm. to editing um, uh, news and current affairs, okay. documentaries, and I couldn't believe that, you know, people were still filming when you were, when you were editing, when you were in the edit. And I was doing films where they were still filming on the last day, and uh, I was just, uh, um, and, but, you know, because we had the Avid, and it, we were able to make those last minute changes. It was great, but I do remember having, that's when I had the two, the, my first news and current affairs film. We had 500 hours. 500 hours? Including the archive. For, for a one hour? No, it was two. For two one yeah. hours? Yeah, no, two hour, a two hour film. Like one two hour <laughs> we film. We had to like these two hours. I remember it all ended in tears. How long, uh, how long did you have to cut that? Um, well, we were supposed to cut it in eight weeks, so we were kind of chastised because we took 14. <laughs> 
yeah, to get it down to two hours. I mean, 500 hours, weren't you sort of right at the limit of your storage on the Avid? Yeah, yeah, it was awful. I, I, <laughs> I can't remember how we managed all the... And every time you move it, I mean, these cables at the back were a bit unreliable, so if yeah. you shake things... Yeah, every that's right, so I literally, I, re I remember I literally had two towers here, yeah. like that, and you know, it was like, don't go near it. Yeah, exactly, you know? don't touch it, because one dodgy cable and it's not quite working. Because also, if you overfilled them, they crashed. <laughs> so, that's right, you always had uh, to leave yeah, about 5% so like, you know, free on each drive. Yeah, so you couldn't... Before, not pay attention if you were when you were digitising yeah. because you needed to make sure you didn't fill them up. Or rendering. You suddenly find out that you've been rendering to one drive and yeah. doing all your effects or something and suddenly everything's crashing and you also, then you can't start it up again because it keeps crashing, isn't that right? Um, you'd have problems getting it back up so you'd have to clear some space oh, up was, or, Sometimes the disc the, would never recover from being filled yeah. like that. Well obviously, well we, yeah, we could, I th I'm trying to remember Moving. how we managed all that archive because a lot of that film was archive mm. and I'm wondering if we went to the tapes and picked off you know, what we wanted probably to, to digitise it but... Um, 28 to 1, there we go. Yeah, definitely storage. Um, I think when the machine crashed, luckily because I've been working at Avid I, I would know to go into, you know, I, I know quite a lot of the workarounds mm. and how to sort of, you know, find your... Been. And I think one of the brilliant things was it was on Mac when it first came, wasn't it? And you could, um, you know, go and you could find your way around the computer. Once you'd learned how to use a computer, yeah. you could find your well, I mean, attic, which is where it's stored. The, these are called bins, and so these bins would be stored in the attic in um, a certain way with a na name bin and the number or whatever. You could go into the attic after it crashed and get your edit bin yeah. out and bring it back into the project and see if it had lost anything. But I just, <laughs> I mean, for me, I don't know about you, but. Although the 910 that we looked at earlier is a computer, mm. this is, these were the first time I was, had any dealings with any computer at all. Yeah. So I had no idea what I was doing at the beginning. Yeah. You know, actually, as soon as you go down to a desktop level, mm. you know, everyone takes computers for granted now. Um, thankfully, we were on Mac because I still hate PCs. Um, but they were easy to use and you could just about move things around without doing too much damage. And I, I remember all the editors were fuming I think when they switched to PC. Yeah Whenever they went to PC yeah, yeah that's right and then they went back to then they went to both didn't they? Yeah that? in the end but that was all yeah. down to Steve Jobs not providing enough what were they called PCI slots. Oh right yeah. So um, but I remember I couldn't you know I, it was the first time I'd ever used properly used a computer. Yeah um, it was it was, a, it was very exciting though I remember working like you know into the night all the time <laughs> and um, having you know loads of fun on it editing. Well, uh, we were in, ch you know, when I was mainly learning Avid, it was about 96 is when I really got to know it, and that was in China. And if we had problems, we were in China. Yeah. And so we had to rely on the dial-up internet to try and find any solution. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, because you, we didn't have mobile, all those, so many sort of new, so much tech, was happening technologically, wasn't there? Yeah, it's all changed dramatically, but it's, uh, yeah, there was know. no like like now we there were no forums. No, no way you could oh, go. Well, I, when I, I learned the avid from a manual. Yeah, <laughs> it was like just going through the manual, going. Mm, well, yeah. I mean, I remember rendering, and I had to get someone else because I didn't know computers enough. I was rendered something, and I wanted to stop it. And it go when you render, it gives you control and dot, control plus dot to stop it. But I didn't understand that it was a full stop. So I was sitting there going, "How do you stop this thing?" <laughs> and I had to get someone else because I didn't know computers enough. 